Enterprises today are relying more and more on big data and advanced analytics to let them identify the dynamics of their market as well as the future trends that will offer them that prized competitive edge. With our current global output of data now estimated at 2.5 quintillion bytes a day, companies must lay down a bona fide strategy to effectively manage and mine the massive data sets of structured and unstructured data that they acquire. An effective strategy, coupled with the leading edge tools and techniques, is the one-two punch that will yield organizations valuable discoveries from the oceans of information that are available to them. By watching this report, IT and business professionals will gain insight into the trends, tools, and techniques that will enable them to achieve success with their big data endeavors. This program features experts Mark Melillo and Thomas Palmieri. Melillo is the Chief Executive Officer and founder of Melillo Consulting. Palmieri's role is that of Director of Operational Intelligence and Service Management at Melillo Consulting. As a technology solutions integrator, Melillo Consulting offers its expertise in infrastructure and data center solutions, IT management automation, application lifecycle management, project and portfolio management, mobility, and the software-defined data center. There are several teaching points in this program. First, we'll ask our experts for an overview of today's big data landscape. Next, a discussion about the top big data trends that IT and business professionals need to understand. Then, we'll look at the latest tools and techniques organizations can use to maximize the success of their big data efforts. We'll then conclude with added advice and best practices and a look at the future of big data. Now, let's begin our report. What types of big data initiatives are organizations focusing on today? A look at a recent report from New Vantage Partners, a strategic advisor to Fortune 1000 business, technology executives, and industry leaders, will tell us what big data initiatives organizations are currently concentrating on. The report and survey included some 50 Fortune 1000 or industry-leading firms. These organizations have been pursuing big data initiative and have had successful results. Here is what the New Vantage Partners survey revealed. Focus areas for big data initiative, such as efforts to decrease expenses through operational cost efficiencies, have proven to be successful 49.2% of the time. 27.9% reported success establishing a data-driven culture. So perhaps some more work is needed there. The biggest success the survey noted was in creating new avenues for innovation and disruption. In this area, a 68.7% success rate was reported. So, all in all, good news for these organizations. With those thoughts in mind, let's turn to our interview guests, Mark Melillo and Thomas Palmieri of Melillo Consulting for their perspectives on today's big data landscape. So, Internet of Things has really changed the amount of data that's now available to analyze. And big data historically was, was very specific. Structured data, looking at it this way, drawing a conclusion. Today, we're taking all forms of data in, whether that's video, unstructured communications, Internet of Things, sensors, all of that information is being analyzed. And today's infrastructure has made that possible. Things like flash technology, where you have data sitting in memory, in essence, uh, with flash storage that historically could take days to pull that data and analyze it. That's available now in real time and a vast amount of data. So it's changed the entire landscape. Everything has matured to the point that we can now analyze all of this information in a real time way. So with the thousands of products and solutions in the market that measure, monitor, and collect information from all sorts of devices and gadgets and applications, we're now finally able to bring all that data together into one cohesive, complete picture of what's going on. We can look at that data from various angles anytime we like, and we can act upon what that data is telling us. Big data has reached the point where the sky is the limit. Uh, we can bring the data coming from anywhere at any time. We can store it. We can prepare it for quick searches and access, and we can get immediate value from it. Big data has been a rising trend for years now, and most everyone will agree that big data has truly taken the business world by storm. 
We ask Melillo and Palmieri what we know about big data now that we did not know about it a decade or so ago. Well, I think no one could sense just how much information was going to be available. I mean, you look back at data warehouses and data marts, and it was fairly structured in terms of what you were looking for and what you were analyzing. Um, everyone has an iPhone or a, you know, a, a cell phone. Uh, most people have multiple devices. Uh, we have a one gentleman that works for us that everything in his house is controlled through IoT devices. Everything from his thermostats to his lights, et cetera. And all of that information is coming in. You have all the video today. Think about how important video is. Uh, used to be people wanted to know when someone came in and out of the building from a security standpoint. Now everybody wants to see every piece of video, every, everything that happens in this country or around the world, there's generally a video of it and somebody wants to analyze that. So now let's look at that differently. How about if we could predict something? If we were getting real-time alerts from machines, video, other sources of data, and we could predict the next security breach. Right. So just think about the various things that could be done if you could take real-time data and use it to predict an outcome. Well, one thing I can tell you is that we've learned that size doesn't matter. Formats of the data doesn't matter. Uh, even knowing what questions you want to answer from the data doesn't matter in today's big data world. We can bring it all in, and in seconds you can answer any question you come up with and even get answers to questions you didn't even know to ask. We asked our experts for their perspective on how big data is changing the world. Here is what Mark Melillo had to say. Uh, look at shopping, um, the information. You have Wi-Fi networks in stores that are giving you all sorts of information about the individual that's, that's walking through a store. Maybe what app they're using or what data, what website they're on. And people are using that same big data to maybe produce something for them, put some information in front of them, put a coupon in front of them because you have information. You know, you get on a website every night on your laptop and, you know, they're keeping track of cookies and where you've been and, you know, they're trying to produce some stuff for you. Now with, with big data in a, in a retail environment, I'm taking that right to your phone. I'm, I'm analyzing that data. I already know something about you and I can see what you're interested in and now I want to present you perhaps with a proposal or an offer, a coupon, something that's going to motivate you. I think that's one great example of where the real-time nature of it. This isn't analyzing after the fact. We need to know why you're walking down the aisle, right, of the store, what you're interested in. And, and that's a whole new aspect. Tom Palmieri offered these thoughts on the world-changing impact of big data. Well, um, I'd say it's really a great time to be involved with big data processing and analytics as the applications are endless and the potential outcomes are nothing short of spectacular. You know, world changing, uh, you betcha. I mean, it's a subtle yet dangerous problem brewing somewhere in a power plant or in a, some nuclear plant somewhere and uh, we can catch it before it's too late. Uh, there might be a devious criminal tiptoeing through your sensitive data and you can catch him before he makes off with his ill-gotten gain. Uh, there could be small but very real problems happening in a hospital, uh, reducing their ability to serve patients well, and they could be nipped in the bud. All of these are becoming possible today within the big data landscape. The goal for most businesses today is to become truly data-driven organizations. Data-driven enterprises rely on data and analytics to set themselves apart from competitors in the marketplace. Becoming data-driven is not an easy task. It takes time, effort, great skills, and dedicated employees to create a data-driven culture where utilizing data and analytics to drive decision-making becomes a regular part of the day-to-day -day business routine from the shop floor up to the executive suite. Since big data and analytics could be considered a backbone of the data-driven enterprise, we asked our experts to single out one rising big data trend that IT and business professionals really need to know and understand. Mark Melillo discussed machine learning, where computers take in copious amounts of data, process it, and teach themselves new skills using that input. Here is what he had to say. One of the leading trends I want to talk about is machine data. Uh, every computer is capturing data of various sources, right? So every sensor in a building or, you know, uh, in a community 
is capturing data. That's all in machine format, right? Um, we talked about video being an unstructured form. You're trying to take all of those in and then analyze that data. The old days, every time I had a data source, it could take me a month to program in how to extract that data source and make something intelligent from it. Today, with a tool like Splunk and, and other tools, that information is immediately available. So every time a data source is produced, there's an application that knows how to read that and that we can connect to and get that information very, very quickly. And then, of course, you're trying to build the glue between that because I've got 50 different pieces of data coming in. They mean nothing by themselves. But if I can put a link together on that data, and this is what Splunk does with, with other tools, it links in, you know, I can build the collaboration between that and actually, you know, figure out, you know, analyze something and, and, and produce a result that seemed like 50 separate pieces of data, but now I've got something that links that together. Tom Palmieri also identified machine learning as an exciting big data trend we need to understand. He offered these thoughts. Sure, so machine learning, um, which sounds grandiose um, and seems to make people think that computers are going to start thinking, um, really what's going on is we've gotten very good at putting together pattern matching algorithms and that's fundamentally what machine learning is about. And we have generally two fundamental ways we can use machine learning. We can use it in a way that's called supervised, which means we spend a lot of time teaching it things that it needs to know so that it's uh, understanding of the world, so to speak, gets better. And there's unsupervised, where we leave the machine learning, or machine learning algorithms to themselves to try and find what, they, what it believes are anomalous uh, events in a sea of events that, that it thinks represent normalcy. Um, these are things that we use uh, in computing all the time, but they're now being focused on operational elements of IT infrastructure so that less humans have to be involved in deciding if there is something wrong and worthy of someone's attention. We were curious about the impact machine learning might have on businesses and consumers alike. Tom Palmieri offered these examples. Well, we've always wanted to find a way to design machines that make our lives easier, uh, make our jobs more productive, less dangerous, find answers to problems we're faced with. We do that in all kinds of industries, and we've even been able to provide these machines or things like them to almost everyone on the earth. Look at the phone in your pocket. Um, but we've also had the secret desire for machines to help us predict what's in store for us, warn us of impending doom or sort through the realities of life going on around us, and tap us on the shoulder with a polite, excuse me, but you're about to run into a problem and here's what you should do to prevent it. So we've spent decades trying to create machines that have the ability to learn from the world around us to understand what normal conditions are and to notice when something has gone awry or is about to skid off the tracks and then allow us to act to prevent it or even to take the action themselves to avoid and remediate the problem for us. Machine learning and AI are today's answers to that secret desire and predictive analytics is one of the promises that these techniques can make a reality. Palmieri feels that machine learning is just perfect for exploiting the opportunities hidden in big data and will help to drive the business value of the data and analytics capabilities that organizations have in hand today. Okay, so machine learning is today's attempt to actually put something in place of the human brain drawing uh, correlations between pieces of data in the sea of data that, that a big data landscape creates for you. Uh, so machine learning algorithms are, are basically there to find patterns, recognize patterns of behavior, patterns of data that normally indicate that things are happening, let's say normally, because your business may operate such that sales peak at a certain time of day or a certain time of year, and over time that data indicates to a machine learning algorithm what normal is. And then eventually if a circumstance occurs that is outside of the norms that the machine learning algorithm has understood to be normal, it can bring that to your attention even before you know what question to ask. Now these machine learning algorithms work best when they're working in conjunction with humans that guide them along the way. They're not really able to replace brains, they can't intuit things themselves. They make good pattern recognition judgments, but every once in a while they need to be course corrected by a human. It's similar to raising a child. You give them all you can when they're, when they're younger, um, but when they reach their own conclusions about things that are a little off the mark, you steer them back on course. That's sort of what you're doing with machine learning algorithms. 
To demonstrate the benefits of AI and machine learning, Palmieri offered another simple example. So think about email. So if an email comes to your inbox and you send it to your spam folder, the AI inside the spam engine that, that, your, uh, that your mail client may have learns that those types of emails may consistently be spam. And that's great. But it, and, and you know, it, it, it's wonderful if it keeps your e email box from becoming cluttered with unwanted, unsolicited email. However, what if during an email spring cleaning, you accidentally swept an email of interest into the spam folder? Now you've told the AI something incorrect, and that's where trouble could start. So you have to make sure that you educate the engine as best you can, be as correct as you can, and don't be surprised if it starts to make assumptions that are off the mark if you haven't given it good information. But with all this good news, we wondered about any concerns people may have about advances in machine learning and artificial intelligence. Palmieri offered this. Uh, machine learning is an attempt to make life more efficient. And ideally, AI will help us enjoy more success, be more responsive, spend less time on low-value work, make more money and feel less angst. Now, IT has always been a human-driven endeavor, working alongside typical laborers such as movers, typists, you name it. As we replace those types of jobs with automation, we make new jobs available and improve existing ones. Now, pessimists might look at this and focus on the loss of jobs. But if we can sharpen the tools needed by certain professions, the benefits become clear. For instance, you probably wouldn't care about the jobs possibly impacted by the advancement of AI that allowed a loved one's cancer to be caught three months earlier. Most organizations now understand that they need to capture the data that streams into their businesses from any number of available sources. As we know, the real benefit, however, is in deriving useful information from these massive data sets. New big data analytics tools help organizations do just that. We asked our guest expert to tell us about tools that can help unlock the hidden value of data. Tom Palmieri offered his view on tools, including one with a very interesting name, Splunk. Well, there are many non-traditional tools on the market that play in this space today. Each has their own strategy, their own idiosyncrasies, their own style. But they all attempt to deliver the most important result assemble large amounts of data as quickly as possible, and execute analyses and computations on that data in as close to real time as possible. So Splunk provides a unified way to organize and extract real time insights from massive amounts of data from virtually any source. Uh, this includes data from websites, business applications, social media platforms, servers, sensors, traditional databases and other open source data stores. Um, it lets you ask any question you like of that data. It doesn't even require you to know what those questions are before you collect and store the data, unlike traditional relational databases that force you to structure the data in a way that lends themselves to the questions that you're going to ask of it. And it can even employ machine learning and AI techniques, as we've been discussing, so that uh, you can take advantage of what's in vogue today and provide a real predictive analytic solution to IT security and business users' problems. When implementing any modern technology or tools, there will be hurdles to overcome. We asked expert Mark Melillo about the challenges organizations typically face as they learn to manage their big data assets and come up to speed with advanced analytical tools. The biggest challenge is ROI. How much do you want to spend to solve a particular problem? Because the problems that can be solved are, are, are vast. And organizations are simply looking at how much, can, how much can I spend? How important is it for me to know that when you're walking through my store, to know what you want to buy or the history of what you've purchased before, how important is that to them? And so there's an amount of money they have to spend to do that. I'd say that's the biggest challenge for them is, is trying to pinpoint ROI around. They know and they're beginning to find out that they can solve a whole vast array of problems. But there's a cost involved in each one of those. So with all of the new data, the machine data that I talked about, that's available and now able to be ingested and, and indexed and, and, re, you know, and searched and so on, analyzed, um, it kind of opens up to the world of opportunities. So which one does your organization want to solve? And again, most organizations start with, let me solve this first, show some ROI, and then I'll expand that capability. With the total cost of computing weighing heavily on today's organizations, IT and business leaders need to identify and implement quality analytic tools that offer the best return on investment possible. 
Mark Malillo tells us why he feels Splunk is an attractive, cost-effective alternative for organizations today. The beauty of Splunk is it's, uh, the cost is based on the amount of data. Uh, it's not, you know, uh, a user license or the typical application. It's, it's about the data. So we can very cost-effectively take some information that you have in your organization that you want to analyze and we, we charge you, they charge you, Splunk does, by the ingestion of that information. So we can do a proof of concept, we can build that application for you, get some real-time data, show the ROI. Then you have the choice to then expand that to other data sources. And when you do, you will pay for that based on the additional amount of data that you're going to put through the engine. So it's, it's really data-driven, the cost. So it can start very small and become very huge. In today's report, our guest experts, Mark Melillo and Tom Palmieri, offered their perspectives on the state of today's big data landscape. Then, they discussed the critical nature of machine learning, a top big data trend that IT and business professionals need to know and understand. We then heard about how analytical tools like Splunk can maximize the value of an organization's big data assets. Next, we'll conclude as our guests take a look at where we go from here with big data and analytics technology. First, we'll hear from Tom Palmieri. Sure, so where do we go from here? Um, the key right now is to recognize that there is just a torrent of data flowing all around your business, and you just need to start somewhere right away. It's already beyond too late to jump on this bandwagon. There are many, many well-understood use cases in the big data space that, believe me, will apply to your business and your situation perfectly. You may think you're a unicorn, but those days are long gone. Take a look at the marketplace of use cases that can be handled by big data solutions in today's market. And with the most applicable and important use cases in mind, choose a technology and an experienced partner that can help you bring that to fruition as quickly and cost-effectively as possible. Don't wait and don't delay. Your competition is not only going to get there first, they're probably already there, so act now. Mark Melillo wrapped up with a reminder of what the overall goal of big data initiatives should be. If we're talking to a line of business, right, they have an idea of what they're trying to do. They want to know, they want to understand their consumer better. So. This can be driven from a line of business. Uh, it can also be driven from the CIO who wants to manage his environment better and wants that uh, uh, analytics about the applications that are running, the infrastructure that's running in his organization, his or her organization. So we can apply it to all areas of that and typically we'll show them where other companies are making great strides and then let them look at, okay, where, where can we start to use this technology? Because if it's new to them, they, haven't, they don't have the expertise for it, they haven't, done, you know, haven't initiated a project. The goal is really to get the first one started so again, they can see the ROI in it. Well, that concludes today's program, What's New in Big Data, Trends, Tools, and Techniques. We'd like to thank Mark Melillo and Tom Palmieri of Melillo Consulting for sharing their knowledge and expertise about the key trends, new tools and techniques that can help organizations achieve success with their big data initiatives. This is Michael Quinlan reporting. Thanks for watching.